Hey, we are live here on Adobe Radio. Thanks for tuning in to We Sam's World every Thursday at 3 p.m. Pacific Time, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. This week I have actor, director, musician, and friend Dean Cameron with me in the studio. Dean, what's up, man? You know, just uh, eating pizza and learning about Cuba. Okay, that was um, <laughs> <laughs> I did not expect that answer. Yeah. Eating pizza and learning it's about from Cuba. Fast Time. So Spicoli oh, orders shit. a pizza, okay. gets it delivered. Mr. Hand says, "What are you doing?" He goes, "Eating pizza, learning about Cuba." It's been a while since I've seen that. Yeah, me too, but it, I remember the line. So. I may have it wrong, too. Maybe another country. What's his name? Sean Penn. That's Sean Penn, right? What's his name? Yeah, Sean Penn. That's, what's his name? Sean oh, Penn. Oh, what's his face? He's an activist or something, right? Big actor. Oh, big, yeah. He's a really big activist. Yes, huge activist. I don't want to say too big activist, but he feels like a... It's a little... It's interesting about him because when he first burst out of the scene, his mm -hmm. whole thing was, I don't do press. I let my work speak for itself. And now all he does is just spew his whatever. <laughs> Some call it nonsense. Yeah. I, I would never. <laughs> hey, I like your beard. It's my strike beard. It's the solidarity fur. Same. My wife hates it, which yeah. is part of the reason. Oh. Because, you know, you got to hurt, hurt the below the line people. Right. <laughs> She's an editor. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm harming her. I stand with SAG after. <laughs> <laughs> While it while it still exists, yeah, I uh, I have this as well because I don't know the next time I'm able to grow out a beard this big. Yeah, yeah. so it'll be nice. Um, everything else going good? I haven't talked to you. Feels like a long, long time. No, since the beginning of the year, we had coffee. Right, we had coffee. Right. Yeah. Um, you were telling me you were writing a pilot. I was, yeah, did that. That's done. I mean, it's not shot or anything. Oh, thank God! I thought <laughs> I lost my role. No, no, I'm no. <laughs> no. Um, at some point, we're gonna do a sizzle okay. thing and. You know, it's just been, you know. Yeah. Uh, I'm with you on the annoyance of uh, productions being allowed. Yeah. It makes no sense. So if the analogy is the United Auto Workers, it's like. I'll just bring this a little. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. We can make some cars. Mm -hmm. Some of us can make cars. And the ones who've been doing it a long time and are the highest paid. Yeah. You guys come in and make cars. But the rest of you, go pick it, the big three auto companies. It makes no sense. Yeah. I, and I, and what's interesting is, I, you know, I'm, you've gotten them too, all these emails from SAG going, oh, no, no, they're not waivers. They're interim agreements. So thank, here, thanks for the double speak. Cool. Got the right terms going on. But they're doing real damage control because I think people are really pissed off about it. Yeah. Because rightfully so. Absolutely. Um, my thing with it is this, uh, at the end of the day, those movies are going where? Yeah. Streaming. Yeah. Or in the theaters or somewhere. No, they're going to the streaming companies like, yeah. or the studio companies. That's where they're going to be sold to. And I think part of the reason we're striking is to show the studios that, Hey, without us, you get nothing. Yeah. But they, but they will get something from somewhere. <clears throat> it's it, again my analogy is in the we are we are in Detroit in the 80s mm -hmm. the UAW and the big three auto companies were killing each other and while they did that the Japanese companies the German companies made better product for less money that people wanted and that's what's happening Korea's making great movies Japan's making great movies China India and they're sending them over here and which is fine, but it's going to kill whatever we have. Right. Yeah. It's one of my issues that I wish the people who were in charge of the tax governing laws for uh, filmmaking and TV ma making in California, I wish they kept that very enticing for, um, for, uh, California and Hollywood because mm -hmm. I feel like so much of but over the past decade especially has gone outside of California and Hollywood and if I were in charge I would make sure that if you were, wanted to be an actor or, uh, or um, on TV or film or an editor or a director or a producer you'd have to go, Hollywood's the place to go mm -hmm. Hollywood's the place to go keep it in California and yeah there are some pros and cons of things leaving but it's been so detrimental to the home base of what Hollywood has been and what it could have been here in Los Angeles. 
Yeah, I, I understand that. I don't think that's realistic, though. Really? Because production, you can anyone can make anything anywhere now. Mm-hmm. You can buy a camera, five grand, oh, true. two grand, make something, put it up. I mean, I mean, we have a precedent for this, which is the music industry, which was destroyed by thing for better or worse. And now artists have to tour and sell T-shirts and do meet and greets after their shows and very different. You don't get rich from records anymore, except for a select few people. Uh, but now it's 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 what the jazz model was for forever in music, where you do a record and you would tour on that for years. Mm. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 I'm going to respectfully uh, disagree. Y- please, please. Yeah, because... I feel they could have made that. They could have made that, that that special place where, yeah, you could have filmed stuff outside, but they're, they're like almost like a mecca of it, at least to have this main hub of, of TV and film. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It, yeah. New York is theater and L.A. is movie and film. I, I agree. And that's I think that's always going to be the case. Mm. But I think you don't if you really want to be in movies and TV. General, you might not have to move to Hollywood because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. there's also yeah. Atlanta and North Carolina and other places I've never worked, but True. where they're they're making stuff. Yeah, um, have you I, worked in New York? Yes, yeah, a few okay. times. Yeah, it's interesting to work in New York. Yeah, it's weird. It's a whole different thing. Very weird. I I would not want to be a production manager there. No, because uh, God, it's just <laughs> the logistics are crazy. Are you are you familiar with it, Peyton? At all? I can imagine. I, I'm not familiar, but I can imagine the chaos yeah, that it, is down there. Because people, like, if you're on the street, they're New Yorkers. They'll walk right through the shot. They do not <laughs> give a f-, f an F. Yeah. Right. They'll just look. Oh, God, I'm busy. Yeah. Or high. So, I've I've done a walk and talk scene in front of the second district court, right in the heart of Manhattan. Oh, right. Oh, right. Yeah. And that was so <laughs> trippy. Yeah. It's just so trippy. And the we we had to stop a couple times just because of. Cars honking and yeah. just real life on the street. <laughs> That's one of them. Also, there's not a lot of space for anything. No. And so a lot of times your uh, uh, base camp is a ways away yeah. from where you're actually shooting, yeah. Yeah. which I'm not complaining about it, but it's just weird because usually in L.A., it's right there, especially if oh, you're yeah, on a studio yeah. lot. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Studio lot's the best. It is the best. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! It is so convenient to work on a studio. Lot. Weird that they did that, right? That they made studios where you could work, huh? <laughs> Good the, thinking, guys. Yeah, oh man. Um, if we go back to the strike stuff. Yeah, there is an, a great article in Vulture. It's long. That is a very sort of tame discussion of both sides. And mainly how the streaming model is a Ponzi scheme. And the big insight that I took away is that a movie you make for $400,000 is in this exact same space as a $300 million movie. So what's the incentive to do big budget mm. stuff? And th- the other thing is, you know, we've grown, we've, this industry has grown where if you, your project does well, you reap a benefit, you reap a reward. But there's no way to reward a popular show on a streaming service. There's, there's no extra money. So, okay, so you have a huge show at Bridgerton or whatever, and great, it, everyone's watching it, but and maybe a few new subscribers, but probably not. So how are you going to reward these creators and yeah. cast and crew and all that it's it's fascinating yeah <clears throat> because when streaming started these companies were making money because people were signing up to watch it it's like oh i can watch stuff for free like oh and but now 10 years later well you've, you've achieved your uh what's i forgot what it's called but um this number and it's not going to change much anymore mm-hmm. and if anything it's going to go down because there's more competition so it's it's a great article, great really good food for vulture, thought. right? Yeah, vulture. Okay, I'll send it to you. Yeah, please. <clears throat> um, me, I don't know if you know this, but I am not super business savvy or anything like that, like at I'm all. Sag, neither am I. <laughs> yeah, 
But whenever I moved out here and 2009 and Netflix was just starting to pick up steam and I was like, what is it? Eight bucks a month streaming all I want. At first I was like, yeah, that's great. And I'm like, now wait a minute. How are they making a profit? Right. Because I know how much it costs to make a television show. I know how much it costs to make a movie. Then I'm like, wait a minute, you would need how many subscribers a month? And on top of that, you need to continuously be bringing in new material right. or else you get old. Right. And you don't, you just, you get old with it. You're like, I'm, I'm done with this. Saturation is the word I was trying to think. Saturation, yeah. yes. And even then, I was like, I don't, how is, it? I mean, eventually they're going to have to start doing commercials or raise their prices. Yeah. And then I was like, wait a minute, then what's different from what TV is now? Here's something where I'm going to start teaching acting next month. Oh. And I'm, making it a hard wake up call for all of my students. This is a business first and foremost. It's hard to wrap your mind around that and to be accept that, but you can't just I'm going to do me and the road will open up just the way it is. I won't have to adapt or anything. That is very unlikely to happen. Yeah. Only if, I don't really know of anybody who hasn't had to adapt to certain business aspects of the business. Yeah. That being said, that short-term memory is first to go, Gleason. First thing to go. You know what's throwing me off? Yeah, what? And you're gonna laugh at me? Okay. It's the incident that happened in the parking lot. <laughs> oh <laughs> my god! <laughs> and I didn't want to talk about it on air, right? Because I was afraid that they would start listening to that episode. But in fact. <laughs> You know what? We're gonna have to take a little side Let's note, and, and I gotta go. and I gotta express what happened. I'll walk there with you, my friend. All right, I'm a stickler for when a parking space says a certain company or group or name. You stick with it, okay? Or else you're standing right by the car. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody was in one of the spots for Adobe, mm -hmm. and I knew it was one of the people here. There's a guy standing outside, and I was like. Hi, how's it going? I'm your neighbor here at Adobe. Uh, is this your car? He's like, no, no, I know somebody whose car it is. And he just kept talking. And he's like, cool, I'll tell him to move it. I was like, cool. I go wait by my car and he keeps talking on the phone. And he keeps talking on the phone and he's laughing on the phone. Now I know this is not a serious conversation. Right. <clears throat> so I'm like, okay, just take a deep breath here. Uh, maybe it's some kind of work meeting call. It's fine. He finally goes inside. And I'm like, oh, awesome. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting oh and it's hot outside oh and I'm wearing a long sleeve black shirt. I know it's my fault. Yeah. So finally, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to be proactive here because I'll be out here for a minute. And I have Dean Cameron coming into the studio. Yeah. Walk inside and little things in life. And it's a mess in there. And I'm already like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm listening to a conversation that just sounds absurd and, and my my blood is boiling yeah. right and finally i close the door kind of loud so they know somebody came in they're like hello and i'm like hi i walk up and i like to de-escalate a situation because we're that neighbors escalated in your head to a battle right yes <laughs> i already want to kill these yes. people <laughs> so and, and, and you're totally de-escalating yourself <laughs> yes they're fine they're laughing and they've got parking so and I know this story is more about me and my issues mm -hmm. more than them. So he's shirtless coming down with a golf club, no no shoes, in shorts. And I'm like, of course you <laughs> <that."> <laughs> Of course. <laughs> this. And I'm like, hi, I'm your neighbor. My name is Wee Sam. I work at Adobe Radio. And he's like, oh, hey, I'm blah, 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 blah. I'm, I'm like, awesome, man. Hey, are you the, are you any of you guys that Kia out front? And he's like, yeah, yeah, so sorry. We'll, we'll move it right away. I'm like, all good, man. Thanks. He moves it. Everything's cool and everything. And, and, and that was it, but it's still lingering. Sure. You know what I mean? Yes. And that's an issue on me. And I need to, I need to learn how to let certain aspects like that go yeah. because I can't control people as much as I want to. Right. right? <laughs> yeah. So I'm glad I got that off my chest. Yeah, I'm glad. Glad I'm here for you, man. <sighs> what do you think that is, man? Uh, 
I think one of the things is since everyone was home alone for three years and doing their own thing and living in their own heads that we sort of forgot how to be in public. We just went to see a theater at the Amundsen and it was, I wanted to kill everybody because <laughs> all these people around and they're talking and and they look weird. I don't like how they look and it just, uh, it just well, you being around people again, it's yeah. awful. Yeah. I forgot how awful everyone is. But they're beautiful, what? and I love I love people. What? So, what? Yeah. What? You, you keep pointing at him. Uh, yeah, you said what? weird people, awful people. <laughs> <laughs> how? Wow. Dare you? <laughs> wow. So how I th- dare you? His last day here, I guess. I like, no, I hope not. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh boy. Let's see. So he's gonna hang. He's gonna. He needs to de-escalate this now. <laughs> I'm gonna come in here shirtless with a golf club. <laughs> And track you down, and I will be more frightening looking than the other guy due to how abnormally thin I can come across. <laughs> abnormally thin. I will look like a creature of the night. Oh my god! Yeah. Whoa! Whoa! whoa yeah. Whoa. We'll be back after these brief messages. Oh my god. No, I think you're right. It's inconsideration. It's impoliteness yeah. that drives me crazy. Yeah. Um, and it's just these little things where if I knew I was in somebody's parking spot. Or if I knew someone I knew was in somebody's part, I'd be like, oh, I'm sorry, let me. And they said we didn't know anybody would be here on a Saturday, which sure. I didn't want to get into it with him. Uh, but, yeah, that's fine. It's like, we're, well, you don't know our business. Do we're we? always here yeah. on Saturday. I know. <laughs> I know. We're here every Saturday. We're here every Saturday. <laughs> you know, it's little things like yeah. that where. I mean, if he had immediately moved the car, you'd be cool. You'd oh, think? I wouldn't care because we I would get have, it. We wouldn't have taken this path. Oh, you know what he said to me? He said, we were, I'm sorry, we were unloading stuff earlier on. And I get why they were parked there because it was closer yeah, yeah. to the door. So it all made sense. Yeah. And it's cool. And by the way, I w- yeah, but great. it's still it's still there. And I'm working on that, okay? <laughs> People in the comment section, I'm working on that. But thank you for letting me share. Sure, man. Let's get back to the strike talk. Where were we? Where were we? <laughs> this is why I couldn't be at the negotiation table. So. Uh, yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, I would love to be. I was going to be on – there. they had a, a – zoom thing yesterday to give us the new speak about the interim agreement yeah and i'd signed up to be on there and ask a question but i went, i'm just gonna scream at people <laughs> and so i will not do that so i didn't didn't watch it. it it's 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 so it's so counterproductive and by the way shout out to the a-list celebrities who were like no i'm not viola davis viola davis right First one, like I read the first one I read yeah. to step down. I was like, "Fuck yeah!" yeah. That's Brad, what I'm talking Brad about. Brad Pitt and uh, Brad Pitt pulled out of one too. So yeah, I just wish there was more of a immediate action yeah. on their part, like for certain people, right. because then it it makes it very clear. Hey, I'm done. Especially if I'm well off. Yeah. If I'm well off and I'm filming something and then my union goes, we're on strike and go, cool, I'm not going to, no. I'm not, I'm not acting. I can't act. I don't want to act. Right. Right. Um, the, <sighs> it was the, it was, I, I was not, I, I've been through several strikes in my, I, since I've been here. So I oh, moved here in 1980. Right. I moved here during an actor's strike actually, which anyway, didn't bother, affect me because I was, I, you know, anyway, but I, I I don't know that they've made anything better. I might be completely wrong, but from where I sit, wages haven't increased. There hasn't. There's more work, but there's less money. It, I just don't know that it's helped. It's always been destructive and personally destructive. Every time I've had some momentum in my career, there's been a strike that has taken the wind out of that momentum sail. Um, <clears throat> so I was not a huge fan of the strike going into it. Like, oh, but I'm, with, I'm in the union. I'll abide by the rules. If we're going to strike. Mm-hmm. I won't work. I won't do anything. Yeah. And then I got a commercial audition. Like, what? Wait, I thought we we're on strike. And then my agent explained these interim agreements. And... The commercial contract's different. They said, well, it's the same actors, though. Mm-hmm. And I thought we're trying to hurt the, the big evil corporations or whatever. So, and so, but so I don't, didn't go on it. I won't go on commercial audition. I won't do voiceovers. I'm just like, mm. I'm, I'm on strike. I'm not going to work. Maybe shooting myself in the foot. I don't work much anyway, so it doesn't really... <laughs> I, I don't, so... It, it, 
it's fine. Um, but, and the other thing, and I was talking to a friend about this last night, because it's all I talk about now, is the, the corporations, what, the stream, whatever, they're consistent, and they've always been that way. And so if, you th if we think that we're going to be able to change their behavior, that's insane because they're, for better or worse, they're interested in profit and the bottom line, and they're interested in making money. And how are we going to change that? Give us more money? Uh, no. Th there is no money to give. There is, but it's theirs, and they get to decide who to give it to. So if we can, if we can shut down the industry then maybe some stuff trickles down to us, but I, I, I don't, I, I think it's insane. It's just going up against a giant wall. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So. It's unfortunate because imagine how, how we would uphold them as like heroes if like all the CEOs got together and be like, you know what? Listen, we're all going to take a, to start off, we're going to take a 2% pay decrease every year from each of us to make sure that we're able to give you guys the, the raises that you need and deserve. Right. And then we're going to address the AI concerns as well and make sure that protections are put for artists and because AI will never replace a human being in terms of art. It, and yeah, I would just feel like we would all just be like more <laughs> be like, oh, oh, that's really nice. Like, thanks. Yeah. A couple things, though. So um, if you read, there was an article in Yahoo on Yahoo News about the strike and and about the writer. It was interviews with the writers mm -hmm. and the actor, some actors on the picket lines going, we want these things and we deserve this. And it was not a, it was not like deadline. It was Yahoo. So the civilians, the real the Americans, were reading the article. Every comment was "screw these people." They're not behind us. They don't understand. They're like, "Wait, so you want money for something you did ten years ago?" What? What? That doesn't make any sense. So residuals, I. I, I, I think residuals are, I, I call it the, the, their Gilligan insurance. So if you get, if you become Gilligan, you will, and you never work again, you will make some money. Sort of a trade off for ruining your career by mm. being great in something. You know, he, they didn't get residuals. It was a disaster for those people. So residuals, I think, are an important thing for us. But to, to, the, the, all the if you look at it from a perspective of someone who does not get residuals it's insane it's an insane concept and so to say we're fighting for this we're fighting for this and and and, and it's like you guys are spoiled what are you talking about it's a it really fascinating perspective i don't disagree or agree with it i just recognize that that's out there and the other thing about ai it's here going to replace a lot of people we don't give a shit about the set decorators the set dressers the set builders who have lost their jobs to with that like the one the thing on uh, the, the star trek this star wars show where they you can just put up a new background and new location like that and build it in ai yeah well that's put a lot of people out of jobs but we don't give a shit about them right Set builders, set decorators, studios, warehouses, storage places, they're all screwed from AI. It's part of the reality of life where technology, you remove jobs from that. There are no lamplighters anymore, train conductors. What? No. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. No, there aren't. I know that's your aspire to be a train conductor, a, bell, a bellman. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but so these are just like realities that I, I think about and um, I, I always like to 
try to really get into this other perspective and, and what's what's the other side what are the arguments against us mm-hmm. S- sort of inter- like what we were talking about before the show started yeah like I will deep dive into stuff and go, oh that's that's fascinating it is um, in terms of the comments that you've been reading mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of that is ignorance and I don't really hold people who are commenting on the Yahoo news articles I, I don't uh, neither it, do I but it, what was interesting is that every one of them was against the strike or, or uh, b- were baffled by the, the concept. I just feel like that's a it's a false barometer of what I, I, because people who comment like that mm-hmm. I don't I don't hold a lot of weight to what they're saying. I don't feel like that's a really true perspective because I'd like to talk more about it in person with people like face to face and what they think. And a lot of people just don't know how the industry works, mm-hmm. which I think you're right there. They, there's an ignorant ignorance yeah. of how the business works. When I've explained to people exactly why we're what we're fighting for mm-hmm. and the residuals and all that aspect, they go, oh, OK, that makes sense. Yeah. But it's yeah. It, and yeah, of course, it's a very self-selecting mm-hmm. sample of people who take the time to comment and register and do all that. But opposed to like looking on deadline, articles on deadline, and everyone's like solidarity and, and screw the screw the corporations. And, yeah. And, and, there's this other side, of the other people who, like, who think that it's ridiculous. It's just oops, sorry. yeah, and that's that's there. Yeah. So we, you know, in Hollywood, we live in this bubble, right? Anyway, and the strike, I think, is increased the bubble right and, yeah where do you think the line is then when we're talking about the AI's ta- the AI the AI is taking over everything yeah. man it's destroying job no but um, when the AI is taking over or it's destroyed a lot of like set decoration or um, set construction or storage place uh, place of jobs where 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 do you think that line is between the evolution of an art the evolution of a business where do you think that line begins to get drawn where it's really now we're we're causing more damage than causing. Uh, I can't talk today, man. I, I fucking still can't talk. Just from the, the no, I, no, I, I, I honestly, <laughs> I I know. Like I'm really upset too because I wanted to get into it with you. I'm talking terribly today. Today's one of those I days. Don't think no, so. you're not. No, you're I not. feel like that. Oh. I feel like that. Anyway, get sorry. over it. Get over it. You're doing fine. I'm so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> I don't. You, you can slow it. Do you know who Nuno Betancourt is? He's a guitar player? No. Okay, he's a guitar player for this band Extreme. And he's one of the greatest rock guitar players alive and has been. And uh, thank you. And he did an interview with this guy, Rick Beato, who's this really in depth musician stuff. And they were talking about AI. And he said, you know, yeah, it's going to. You can compose music with it in different styles. You can add voices of singers, mm-hmm. dead singers, live singers, and make a song with... He said, yeah, you can do that, but there will always be need for humans, and you have to be great. And you have to be so fucking good that you cannot be replaced. You know, the music industry, they said drum machines going to kill the industry synthesizers but back when i was a kid like oh synthesizers they're going to kill music home recording is going to kill it home taping is going to kill music well there's more music than ever now there's sixty thousand songs released a day on spotify so what do we want we want more music or do we want gatekeepers who just allow a little bit again I don't know if it's right or wrong, but this is the reality. And recognizing that reality, I think, is important. And because and, it's it's gonna it's happening in showbiz. My, my kid hasn't watched a TV show. I don't, he he. We watch Good Omens, but he'd rather watch YouTube or TikTok, and that's that's content, mm-hmm. and that's not in the union, and it's ten seconds long. He, d- he doesn't watch my demo reel? He does not watch your demo reel. He doesn't watch my stuff. What? No. 
he finally saw one movie I did, finally, and enjoyed it. So that was cool. But um, it couldn't be couldn't be less interested. Which movie? It was Summer School. Yeah. What's his name again? Duncan. Duncan, dude, rewatch Summer School, okay? No, he just watched it. We it, they showed it in a theater the last year. Yeah, watch a new one. What? What's a different watch a, one? Watch a new them? movie. Uh, yeah. Rewatch Summer School. Why? Write me an essay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Interesting. On the new things you was observed. Wait, write an essay? Yeah, write. Oh, not type. Okay. Um, yeah, that's <laughs> not going to happen. You know, I tried to write something the other day. Uh, I'm writing right now. This is my handwriting now. Oh, my friend. <laughs> my handwriting looks like I've been, I've been pushed down the stairs. Like, write and pushed down the stairs. His is a, worse than mine, if you can believe it. But, but they type. I, I mean, that's sort of a... Reality, you know? yeah. There's writing, cursive, cursive. Gone. I, I, th- I firmly believe that the human mind has not yet evolved Mm-mm. to keep up with all Mm-mm. the new technology, as no. well as the new attention and the fame and social media yeah. aspects of what all that brings to a person's brain. Okay. The, the, the rewiring that happens. Um, I was, I've been rewatching Jersey Shore. Oh boy. And, by the way, guilty pleasure. Oh, this is awesome. Guilty yes. pleasure. And there are, there's something that I noticed in one of the episodes. The highs are high and the lows are low. And they happen so quickly mm. between each other. Right. There's a breakup going between Ron and Sammy. Have you <laughs> watched Jersey Shore? Sure. It's been a while. but okay. So Ron and Sammy, uh, I'm on season three right now. Ronnie, they have a, right, Ronnie, yeah. yeah. Ronnie! Right. Um, they have a very up and down relationship to say the least. Okay? <laughs> right. And uh, I think it's compounded by the fact that, you know, they're in their early 20s. Alcohol is involved. They're sharing the same room. Yeah. You haven't really developed the, you know, j- your brain hasn't even fully developed yeah. as a man until you're 25. Right. So, of course, everybody's going to be an idiot. Right. So since the highs are high, the lows are low, and there's such short time in between them, I think... Here's my theory. Scientists, let me know if you want to do studies. Give me credit for it. I think that begins the rewiring and possibly the beginning stages of borderline personality disorder. That, yeah, maybe. That's a big claim. That is a big claim. That's a big one. Big claim. That's a big claim, and it's a theory that needs to be tested because that's the scientific method. That's your hypothesis. That's my hypothesis. hypothesis. Thank you. That's so why I have a team around me, especially on days like this. <laughs> you can't speak. I can't speak. Um, the clumped. That reminds me. They're trying to unionize reality TV yeah. workers. Really? Yeah. All right. Good. Good Good luck with that. You know, I found out how much they were getting paid per week. and The Jersey Shore people? Yeah, for the first season or two. 15 grand a week. Wow. Per episode. Per episode. Oh, which wow. Which is a lot for what they were doing. Yeah. It's a I think they were there for a month oh, or a month okay. and a half. So of course it's enticing for them to do that. Mm-hmm. I think as time progressed they got more popular. Um they were obviously getting more money per yeah. episode and also I think Paulie D is a successful DJ. He, yeah. he was making like hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars a year if not millions. Yeah. So and they were they were also getting paid for appearances mm-hmm. and Yeah, of course. All sorts yeah. Of sponsorships. Um you know what? I'm in agreement with you. You have to be great. You have to be yeah. really good at what you do. I recently got into a conversation with someone who was interested in becoming an actor. And her first few questions weren't, were, were all like, how do I get an agent, all this stuff, my headshot, blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah. And I was like, are you in acting class? Right. Do you, like... And and Steve, oh my God, oh my God, what's his name? Steve, uh, Steve, uh, famous comedian, Stephen. Uh, right. No, um, plays banjo. He's a Steve Martin. Steve Martin. Nobody ever. A- he said this. Nobody ever asks, "How do I get good?" Yeah. And I'm like, that is the problem. <clears throat> Nobody wants to know how to get good. Very little people want to know how to be really great at something. Right. And then when they find out the amount of work that it takes, the amount of sacrifice, the struggle, the pain, they're like, ah. Yeah. Well, that's why, I mean, you know, I always tell people, don't be an actor. Because if they don't listen to you, then, well, they've got the balls to go forward and do it. 
you know, tell them no, don't, don't do it. Go home. Yeah. And they're like, well, no, I can do this. I think though, I think, uh, again, playing devil's ad- advocate, part of that is that, that you don't ask because you, you, how to be good because you, you think you're awesome. And, which is part of the reason you become, you come to Hollywood. You go, I'm so awesome. I want people to watch my mug 45 feet big on a screen. I want them to spend 20 bucks, go to the movies and sit mm. down and watch me be cool. Yeah. Or I'm going to go into their houses and their TV and I'm that cool and awesome. Mm. So you have to have that delusion mm. to say, yeah, I, I can, I can, if Troy Donahue could be a movie star, then I can be a movie star from a chorus line. Well, there's a rule here. No musicals in the studio. It's not a musical. It's a documentary. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. What's going on with my show? The last two weeks have been musical after musical. Peyton, are you setting this up? No. <laughs> never. I would never. I'm I'd never do that to Dean. you. Never, never. This isn't Low Speed Chase, okay? <laughs> That's his band, if That's you guys are wondering. Yeah. One of your bands. Yeah, one of them. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. But I, I, but I agree. I mean, you, it, but then you get, that's what happened to me. I was like, I'm awesome. I'm great. And then I got here and I was like, oh, I need to learn how to do this and got really intense into that learning. I got a, uh, since I got a little bit of a, cause there's a newbie, not a newbie. I shouldn't say newbie, but someone who's fairly new in this industry kind of came into LA at the wor- like kind of a worse time. Peyton, <laughs> you came to LA during COVID yeah. or pre, almost pre COVID. Yeah. Right. When we settled in, me and my wife. COVID, boom, nice. happened. It March. was so awesome. Uh, it was, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good. Do you feel like that you've experienced that, that you're like, oh, I have to get good to be successful? Here? Yeah, but I'm also just very confused. I still know how <laughs> nothing works because right when something takes off, everything, like I, I, I just did like my first movie oh. a year ago. And then just not too long after, as we, I auditioned for like a video game that that was getting going and then now this has happened and now i feel like everything's on pause again yeah it's it's really weird mm-hmm. yeah kind of a but d- at any point did you feel like that that you had to like okay in order to oh, yeah s- I'm, yeah i'm still trying to do it right now yeah. this is the perfect time to be doing classes yes. and stuff yeah which is which what i'm doing yeah 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 that's a that's a that's a the, one of the first realities i feel like for people who are serious about coming to la or new york become an actor right. you have to be good yeah you have to be the competition is crazy it's crazy it's crazy you know what's helping me with brazilian jiu-jitsu now that i've been obsessed with it since the fall you know how we get rejected so much as actors mm-hmm. well speak for yourself <laughs> damn <laughs> slam slam me on my own show uh it, it, the the aspect of constantly getting tapped or oh you know, having another grown man or grown woman on top of you and you can't do anything about it. Wow. And you have to go, I, 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 mercy, tap. Right. You know what I mean? That, that there, there's something about that that's, that's helped because of acting with all like the, the auditions I've gone on, gone out on and gotten. Uh, the acting, the rejection has helped your jujitsu? Re- yeah. Oh, how is that? Tell me about that. That's fascinating. Yeah, because every time I tap, it's, I'm like, all right. This isn't the end of the world. Right. There's another match coming up and I can win that one. We're going to continue rolling until the timer r- runs out. So That's I go into smiling. Yeah. Instead of like, and sometimes it's not all like this. Some days it's like, fuck. Right. And then other days it's like, all right, I'm learning something. Great. Most of the time it's the positive side. That's a, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny when I was, uh, when I stepped away from the showbiz and worked as a programmer, I would get hired every, every, uh, job interview I had, I'd get because I was great at meeting people oh. and great in interviews because I'd done it so many times. Yeah. I've had so m- millions of job interviews, wow. right? So it's the same sort of, there's a, these unintended consequences of constant rejection have you ever counted your auditions? No. no. I have them all saved in emails wow. since the first time I've come out to LA. We didn't have an email. But, okay. But I, I do, I was thinking this might be a cool podcast 
because with the advent of self-taping, I have all of my auditions. Okay. And I'll go back and watch them, and I'll go, yeah, I, I see why I didn't get that gig, or I, I should have gotten that gig. But I think it might be interesting to not in a bitter way to show my audition and the guy who got it. I see, like, oh, he, this is what he did in the thing, and I get why they cast him. Bro, cool. this, and you could have guests come on yeah. who want to share that too. Yeah. There's. Can we, sh can we do this? I think this is this is unique. That's actually a and really good idea. Yeah. And show the stuff I, that I've gotten. Yeah. And say, like, I, this is what I did in the audition. It's a little different when I got to the set, or it's exactly the same, you know? You know what? I would highly recommend doing this because no one else is doing it, yeah. and you would be very good at it. Yeah. And not, and again, not in a bitter, like, well, that guy yeah, said yeah. it was better than him. <laughs> and it, yeah. It was like, oh, this is, this is reality. And maybe the guy who got it isn't as good, but I'm not going to cut him down. It's just... They cast him for whatever reason, and yeah, or her, which happens a lot. Really? No, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> Just, yeah. yeah, I think that's good. No, yeah. this is, this is, this is something. Yeah. I think we can make this work. Okay, let's do that. What would we call it? Um, Bitter asshole. Okay. Well, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, think there, I think there's a. Movie and I'm talking about the that. taste of my anus, not. Oh, yeah, it's just bitter. It's definitely it's a movie. Bitter. Wow, that got dark, <laughs> so to speak. Um, no, this would be good. Could call it take two. Take I'm so two. sorry, I muted you right when you started right talking. <laughs> I'm so sorry. You've changed, Peyton. I know. I'm so sorry. Take two. <laughs> take two. Take two is good. I wish you could have met our intern uh, while he's here. I, I talked to Zeke the other day. Has he called you yet? No. Yeah, I told him, um, by the way, if he calls, I said, hey, you should talk to Peyton. He's going through some serious health issues right now. <laughs> and so he's going to call you, Thank you at some point. Thank you. Yeah. Well, now I, he knows because he does listen to the podcast. Oh, shit, he does. Then oh, he can get man. a good laugh. Well, he's got a week to still do it before he hears this. Yeah. So that's true. <laughs> oh, and if he hasn't called, we know he hasn't cared. Yeah, that's true. Boom. Boom. He used to be uh, our about. intern. He's 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 uh, hopefully coming back. Oh okay. Uh, but I wish you got a chance to meet him. Okay. He's not all. Uh, he's there. cookie for cocoa puffs. <laughs> <laughs> cookie for cocoa puffs. No, no, he's fun. He's fun to be around. Did I meet him at the reading? Oh yeah, I think you did. Yeah, he was there. Mm -hmm. Which, Long by hair. the way, oh the crazy guy. No, I'm joking. Yeah, the I crazy guy. <laughs> Bro, that reading. <sighs> it was my fault. I learned a lot from it. Yeah. And Good. I realized. A script that's not meant just to be heard audio wise is not going to relay well if you just audio record it. Yeah. It's for, the, it's it, half of it, most of it is visual, the yeah. script. So it's going to be really h hard to relay that story and tone through audio only, which yeah. is why it didn't work out. Yeah. There was, there, people have tried over the years and have done a couple of them to have a business where you, read scripts and give them to executives and they can listen to them while they're driving their cars and it never works out because of that mm. exact reason it's visual yeah and it's yeah you, you know it's, yeah. Hard. it's like people try to when you're recording just your voice you will sort of lean into that yeah. more than you would if you're on camera yeah that's difficult a lot of people did well Oh, uh, yeah. Everybody did well in it, yeah. honestly. And it was just me editing it going, okay, this does not work. <laughs> good. Good, so good learning. Something. Yeah. I uh, actually, I got, uh, I stopped marking them down, I think, 2021. And I should actually go back and see how much more I have. But I think I've gone out on like over 400, if I'm not mistaken, theatrical auditions from 2021. Wow. Yeah. Which is an insane amount That's of auditions. Lot. Yeah. And then I want to I want to actually tally them <coughs> again and see see where I'm what at. Your ratio, not just ratio, but how much I learned. Oh, you know, like going back seeing my old self tapes because I have all my self tapes saved on Vimeo. Great. Yeah, and I've seen a couple of old ones. Oh my god. Yeah. When we have Taylor back on from Stagecoach, yeah. I want to show her some of my older auditions, some bad ones. Oh my god. It's I, it's I don't know how you feel, but I love self tapes. It's changed my work. It's gotten better. That's good for you. I love it. I love it so much. I 
I know okay. people hate it. I I do I miss. I mean, I, but I wasn't doing this, but I miss going into a room with you know producers, and that's great. But that was very rare for me. It's usually an assistant with a camera. So, but I have to see the eight guys I've been seeing for the last forty years, like, uh, and getting in my head like, oh, he'd be, yeah, he's so much better. He'd be much better than this and, than me. And and then you get to do, you have to do it once, which is not like working. You, you do several takes, mm. yeah, and so we can do that as self tapes and get it and don't have to worry about the dialogue as much because I have a, like my music stand with the big print and I can refer to that and I have a reader that I trust that I work mm-hmm. with and it's just it's just changed my work and it's got and I've my work has relaxed and gotten more confident and um, be, just better well that's good to hear from you yeah I, we're, we're definitely on opposite ends of this spectrum I, b- this. I believe it I yeah I, I get it yeah but selfishly for me I want to I want to keep doing that if there are ever any more auditions ever again. In person? Oh, just in general. Just in general. Yeah, I think the strike, what's going to happen is all the actors are going to um, be on, like, we're going to end up on Warner Brothers. You know, it's going to be like Helm's Deep from Lord of the Rings. And we're going to charge in. Like, we got to <laughs> drop a ring into the water tower, the Warner Brothers. We got to climb that. <laughs> oh, we got my God. <laughs> nice. Be a good short. Funny. Yeah. That actually would be a funny yeah, short. Yeah. Um, but you're finding other things to be creative. But obviously, you have two bands. Yeah, yeah. I play music. It's a music hobby. Low speed chase. Yeah. Not low speed chase. Low chase. speed chase. Low speed <laughs> chase. Um, and I got to hear some of that the other day. Great stuff. Thanks. Very fun. Thanks. Talented. And then you also do a fun uh, live. A karaoke cool. band. Is it still karaoke? No. Okay. All the, I'm, I mean, all the, the all the graphics still have karaoke, but because I walked away from it a few years ago because yeah. it got crazy because we're playing this gig and it and it it's it, crazy drunken people mm. and it just got to be too much for me yeah and <laughs> and it's it's other, other this other weird thing and i'm i'm my, this might be in my head but i'm this is was was happening these young women who would be drinking a lot started treating me like i was their dad and taking their aggression out on me and me alone and it was just me and I'm playing bass and I'm sort of sitting back and these girls come up and like, why don't you play this song well, like, while I'm playing they go do you play Fleetwood Mac no no one wants to hear Fleetwood Mac it's slow and sad <laughs> but and and get really mad like mad at me and yell at me and what I'm first I'm I'm working right now. Can you just not talk to me? Wow. So I walked away from it and and it sort of changed hands and uh, gave it to this other guy. But now I so now I'm basically a sub a substitute. Okay. Uh, but I have one regular gig on Wednesday nights. All right. And where is this? That's at uh, Jameson's Pub in Culver City. Awesome. Yeah. It's cool. it's a, it's so much fun, and it's uh, yeah, it's a blast. Okay. Especially because now I don't have to worry about getting other musicians. If someone goes out of town, it just I show up, plug yeah. in, play. Great. Can we talk about something? Of course. Corey Feldman. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I am. I've been following him for a while. Do you know him personally? I forget. Not personally. Boy. I've I've encountered him over the years. Okay. Yeah. He's such an interesting person for I like watching certain people and I don't know if character study is the right word because I'm not like writing notes as I'm mm-hmm. watching them but I like just delving into everything they do. Okay. Have you seen the two Corys that reality show yes. he had? Yeah. Okay, it was partly scripted. Yeah. But it was a train wreck to watch. Yeah. The other Corey passed away, sadly. Yeah. Uh, Corey Haim yeah, from drug overdose, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. That's totally sad. And yeah, um, but m- m- going back to Corey Feldman, the his arc as being a child actor, all the stuff he's great, done. A great child actor. Untouchable. Him and Corey Haim were uh, 
amazing. I liked him in what was it? Uh, Stand by Me, right? Stand by Me was great. He was a, he did a thing in one of the Friday the Thirteenth movies. That's oh, right. He yeah, he was taken over by. Mm-hmm. Uh, amazing. Yeah. Don't do drugs, or if you do them, do them in moderation. But they ruined themselves. They his every time I see him in the news or I read an article about him or I see a YouTube video, his sense of reality is not uh, anywhere close. I, I was someone p- p- posited that he's punking all of us. <laughs> and I I know I'd like to think that I like. like yeah, man, he's he's Andy Kaufman us all. He's on this other plane. That would be awesome. I don't know that that's true. That, there's no way that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. D- Dean. But but the optimist in me. Yeah. And there is a tiny little optimist in me who uh, wants to, like, yeah, Corey. We'll, we're going to continue this. Our time on Adobe has come to an end. Make sure you follow Dean Cameron at Dean Cameron. Check out his band, Low Speed Chase. And check him out if you're in the L.A. area at Culver City Wednesday nights. Wednesday nights. Pub, Culver City Jameson's Pub. Culver Jameson's City. Pub yeah. does a great show. Go out there, support him. Don't talk uh, to me while I'm playing, though. Yeah, if you have <laughs> if you have any father issues, do not go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> unless right. you, unless yeah yeah. Uh, show continues on on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Check out the full episode tomorrow morning. Thanks for tuning in. The show continues on. Um, bro, <sighs> Corey. Corey Feldman. First of all, you know when he did his uh, "This Is a Amer- uh, Good Morning America" thing, yeah. his show that they brought him on twice. Well, yeah, because who doesn't want to see that? Yeah, how could you not bring him on yeah. again? Right. Real talk, and I want this is a friend test, and you're <laughs> this is a friend test here on air. <laughs> okay, you ready for this? Yes, Peyton. Yes, if I put on a show like that on Good Morning America, yes, exactly like that. And I come up to you and be like, hey, man, what would you think of the show? What would you say to me? I'd probably tell you it wasn't good. Mm. How would you say that? I want to know exactly how you say that. That's hard because, honestly, I would probably try to – me being the person I am, I would try to say it in the nicest way possible. I'd still try to get the point across, but I'm not a blunt person that's just going to go, dude, that sucks. Because I I don't think that's too productive. I'm going to walk you through why I think it was bad, though. You know what I mean? Okay. I'll accept that. I won't lie to you, though. I won't say, like, that was good. Okay. Fair. Same. I'd be probably be a little bit more blunt, though. Yes. <laughs> I'd be like, were you punking us? Were, let me gauge. Are you, are you serious? Are or? you doing heroin again? <laughs> again? <laughs> again. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I, I, well, I have something to say about this, about his work if you look at again look at the comments a lot of them are this guy is, is insane but a majority of people like I love you Corey this is great and there's no accounting for taste people like him he's on tour I'm not so m- m- people might be going there to laugh at point and laugh at him when he's doing these festivals now but he's playing music for money live in front of people it's ed wood made movies ed wood fulfilled his dreams and made movies they might have been horrible but he was doing it ed wood is the uh, the director writer director yeah the really made very plan nine from outer space oh okay okay. yeah um so this is a thing about audience is you find your audience so because you know I'm very I was very reluctant to I'm very reluctant to promote my record which just came out August 2nd on Spotify and everywhere low speed chase because I have Corey Feldman in my head go I like am I am I that no but you don't know no I know my son <laughs> hates my music. He, I played him song. It's not. He likes hip hop and whatever, but he's like, it's it's cringy to him that his dad is like singing and revealing self right, through music. But what I've learned 
about promoting music, especially now. I'm not competing with 25 year olds. I'm not competing with Olivia Rodrigo or any, I'm competing with people from probably 30 to 65. That's my audience. People who like sort of boomer dad rock. That's my audience and I can find my audience and, and cultivate that. Corey Feldman's found his audience and has cultivated it and is releasing stuff and good for him. Uh, it's not my thing and it's, I, it's weird and cringy and, but he, he's doing his thing and go for it. Dean, I, I'll, I'll tell you this right now. If you have costume changes during any of your performances and coming from, a, no, I just like wear your a thong. Black, I just okay, wear the gold to my thong. Bro, you're not you're not Corey Feldman. No, I know. Yeah, I'm just letting you know because <laughs> yeah. Corey Feldman is Corey Feldman, mm -hmm. and it's not good. You're saying I can never be that like that, uh, bro. <laughs> and <laughs> yes, he is touring and he is getting paid. However, I've seen some of those YouTube videos, yeah. and I'll be honest with you. He's put up a wall of delusion of how sad it is on what he's doing that it's become almost like a circus freak show mm -hmm. whenever you go see this thing. Yeah. Now, would I go see a Corey Feldman show and laugh at it? Yeah, yeah, like that's how bad it's gotten. And I know that's a really shitty thing to say, but like it is, it is more of a train wreck than anything because I think his biggest issue, and he's never had somebody say this to him, he stopped figuring out how to become – good and, yeah. and 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 continued to hone his craft right. and he's had too many yes people around yeah. him and people taking advantage of him sadly yeah and that sucks but also he's not perfect either he's probably made some mistakes along the way and I, I just don't he might like what he does and that's fine but when I see him perform I can't honestly from my heart say that's good yeah and yeah. and that's like a big issue I have with people because if that's good then like how do you describe Taylor Swift mm -hmm. she's great if the bar of good yeah is Corey Feldman <laughs> well no Taylor <laughs> but it, 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 it good good it, good in art is just sub, it's so subjective Dean. No, it, it, it truly Dean is. Cameron. People it hate is. Taylor Swift. Pe people, my kid, like, hates her. Part of it is because it's not cool and he's a teenage boy and, you know. But there, there, there's so much stuff out there that's crap. That, but people like it. And, and I have made peace with that. And you need, you need to make peace with that. No? Okay. No, Dean. I'll tell you why. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Um, because you can recognize that oh that's not good and and that's important because ar art and being an artist a lot of it is taste and what your taste is defines you as an artist so yeah you, you don't like Corey Feldman you don't like whatever Machine Gun you know Kelly what? but you, you you need to yeah just recognize that people like different stuff you know what it's I won't go see the Barbie movie it looks awful <sighs> I'm the problem it's me ah. Uh, Hello, it's me. Here's the thing, though. It's not good what he's like mm -hmm. his music he's doing, and I'll tell you why. I, I agree there's with tech, you. There's technical aspects mm -hmm. where he's off, and that alone. Yeah. And then, I know dancing can be subjective, mm -hmm. but, bro, yeah, yeah. he's off beat. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, and. I have a good friend, and I think uh, Jordan, Jordan and Isaiah supposed to come on. We might just have Jordan on. And I think I've told this story before. Jordan Matlock is a friend of mine. And one of the reasons... Oh, are we dropping names now? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. We I don't know who that is, though. Yo, you know who Jordan Matlock no, is? No. Oh, dude. He's so mean to Jordan, Dean. <laughs> <laughs> so mean to Jordan. Not no. we, you're not mean. How could you be mean to people? <laughs> now I officially do this. No, he's a friend of mine in high school. And one of the reasons I actually, I actually have a... a, a a lot of respect in terms of the acting field and that's it with Jordan. <laughs> no, I have a lot of respect wow. for him because we were catching up months and months and months ago and he was saying like, dude, I got this. I did this really cool self tape and I want to show you it. And I'm like, I'm like happy with it. And I was like, love to see it. I watched it. 
it was not good. Okay. And I went up to him, and, I'm, and I, I didn't go up to him. I called him. I was like, hey, would you like some honest feedback? And he's like, yeah. I was like, cool, let's do this face-to-face. And he was nervous. He was like, uh, sure. And I told him exactly what I thought was wrong with it and right. what he can improve on. Right. And he started hustling and working. And I'm no joke. Within like two or three like workshops I did with – or like coaching sessions I did with him, he started booking and he started going on more callbacks and booking more and more and more. And he worked at it. Yeah. Now, is that because of me? Yes. Yeah. But – <laughs> he he chose to work on it. Yeah. And th- but no, but, but seriously, the whole point of that is the the and I'll steal this from the movie Whiplash. The most detrimental words in the English language are "good job." Oh yeah, agreed. And I and I think about that. If I would have gone, oh yeah, that's good, man. Good job. How? Well, it, like seriously, yeah. Like, and got to be like that towards people. And, and I don't think Corey, Corey Feldman gets that. No, of course not. But but he doesn't want that. Obviously, he does not want that. So he's in his bubble and, and like other artists are in their bubble and they do their... Well, the whole reason I brought Corey Feldman up, I heard he got a divorce from his uh, lightest wife. But yeah, they're getting Seven it. years. Yeah. They're separating. Yeah. They still live, love each other, apparently. They're my best friend. He had that angel house, which was really the sketch. The Feld Mansion. The Feld Mansion, where he would bring in aspiring yeah, uh, women musicians. See, that's the part. Yeah, there's that, some that, sketchy stuff. Yeah, that's the sketchy thing. Like, mm-hmm. sure, his performances were weird and everything, but that's where I was like, oh, no. You can't do that, Corey. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, 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 no. Home for wayward girls. Yeah. No. We, there's, we can talk offline about stuff. Oh, shit. Okay, yeah. great. Can't wait. Um, we're off. <laughs> what time is that? I just want to make sure. But we're I, 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 but the people you respect and love, you are honest with them, and that's important. That's you should be honest with them. Mm. If, but if Corey Feldman ever said, "What do you think of my thing?" Cool, man. Good job. You would tell him good job. Yeah, because I'm, I'm not going to change him. I would ask him, do you want honest feedback? I, I might say, do you really want honest feedback? But he yeah. doesn't. No one does. I mean, no one like that does. I was forced to say good job to somebody after watching their theater show. There's a there's a thing <laughs> uh, raising kids about the, the phrase good job, which we never said that to our kid because it it implies that you are – judging the thing they're doing so if they're making th- something with play-doh and, da, 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 and you go good job it, it, it doesn't allow for them to fail and make be creative and do do something cool on their own mm-hmm. without some like needing approval from mm-hmm. people so good job is a i agree i hate hate good job you know what i say mm-hmm. uh to children whenever they go what is your objective? <laughs> <laughs> and they say it comes in an envelope at the end of the week. Wait, what is that from? It's an actor joke. Oh. What's my motivation? Oh. <laughs> I thought this was from another no. uh, 80s film. No. <laughs> that, no. no. That I haven't seen in a while. I only quote <laughs> Apocalypse Now, Animal House, and Fast Times. That, that is a very interesting <laughs> pool of quotes. Well, uh, Apocalypse Now and Animal House are my two favorite movies. <laughs> They're, the, I think, the greatest movies ever made. Well, once this uh, strike is over, and I've talked to Eigner. Um, Eigner. You can't even pronounce his name right. <laughs> it's Eigner, right? Eiger. Or Iger, if you're. If I you're like that Iger. better. Iger. Robert um, Iger. Uh, let's let's work on this uh, pilot yeah. that you wrote because I, I we never got a chance to do that, no. which I was really excited to work through with it. I had some questions, of course. Right. There's a new version of it. Steve liked it a lot. Steve, our 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 pimp. <laughs> our pimp. Yes. <laughs> That's good. Thank you, my pimp. That's how I'm gonna like. <laughs> Please sign off an email with that the next time <laughs> you do it and come back with your results. WP, my pimp. You know what? I uh, I harass uh, Taylor at uh, Stagecoach. by, uh, And they won't let you do it more than once, but I keep bringing it up. Uh, a Venmo request for parking, <laughs> but it's like $137. <laughs> <laughs> 
Awesome. One time I went up there and uh, yeah, I had to pay for parking and oh. they're like, just Venmo me the request. I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I Venmo I Venmo request a friend of mine who's a famous person. Yeah. A twenty thousand dollar request. He's like, what is this request? I'm like, I just asked that money. You might do it. I, <laughs> <laughs> I could use I could use a twenty grand. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Well, we've talked about the strike enough. I feel I feel yeah. everybody knows our positions. Yeah, we've talked about. I don't know what my position on the strike is, though. <laughs> Why'd you give that face to camera? I don't know, man. Today's an off day. <laughs> oh, good. This golf club guy just threw oh, me off yeah, completely. Yeah, yeah. Gotta be. Thanks for raising the bar for me. <laughs> Slammed him. Hey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dean. But I don't know what my position on the strike is. Okay. I just know that these there's these things that are realities. Okay. And they're also things that are possibilities that we don't know what yeah. the future holds. So, I don't know. I know I do know that people are suffering. Yes. And those people are screwed. Cuz they go back to work, they're not going to get more money. Below the line people, crew so what better, to do yeah what to do i thought the <sighs> i so i mean gigs. i know i i was playing two gigs a week and there's been a fall off on people going out and I, the bartenders were like yeah it's strike strike is affecting everything but just it's a reality don't know Good or bad? It's there. Do you know who Grufik is? Grufik? Yeah. No. He works for the producers. He's like, um. He sounds like a Lord of the Rings character. I am Grufik. Yeah, a little bit. Okay. His demeanor, and um, he's um. If you ever see articles about him at all or anything, Grufik. Okay. No. Keep an eye out. Okay. Shady guy. I hear he's swell. That's his last name. I, I hear he's uh, a really swell guy. Grufik swell. What a name. What kind of name is that? It's my stage name. It's, um, <laughs> it's my, <laughs> I, my <laughs> real name is John Smith, but I changed it to Grufik Swell. <laughs> it's Yugoslavian. Oh, okay. There you go. You know what I don't know much about? Eastern Europe. Seems fine. Seems like a bad place. <laughs> Potatoes, wild dogs. That's about it. I want to know more about the countries and the uh, cultures and how that's evolved over the years. I don't know much about that. Okay, well. I think today that's what I think I'm that's your next podcast. <laughs> yeah. Wiesem and U Yugoslavia. Hey, no, you got to do this podcast. Are you going to do it? Yeah, I'll do. Well, I, I, I have, I need help doing that. What do you need help with? D doing it because I won't <laughs> do it. I'm 60 years old. I just want to take a nap all the time. Come on, man. But I think it's a good idea. I just don't know how to do it. What do you mean do it? Like record? Like make love. Make love. Oh, we're talking about, oh, the podcast. I thought you were Dean, talking about doing it. When you make love. <laughs> yes. First and foremost. Yes. Unmitigated eye contact. Yes. And screaming. It, right? The screaming is a byproduct. Profanity, okay. Screaming <laughs> profanities and eye contact. That's what <laughs> No. the guy I met on the internet told me. You know what? You, you how? Well, do you need a studio space? Yeah. You need a producer to record yeah, I need it all? a producer, yeah. What kind of work are you willing to put in for it? Whatever needs to be done. Well, not whatever, because you need a producer. Right. Well, I mean, whatever I can do. Okay. So what I, I what out. I would, I need someone to at least talk about this offline. Oh, this is fun. Okay, we can talk about it. For <laughs> us. No, dude. Okay. No one's watching anyway. No. Especially this one, because of the golf club stuff. And you can't talk. Dean. And Griffin Grufik Swell. Grufik Swells is. Dude, that's your alter ego from now on. <laughs> Grufik Swell. You're in an all black suit. Let's throw to yeah. Grufik. And you have a cigar in your mouth. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I like that actually. It's That'd good. be interesting. Yeah. Slick back hair. Mm. Oh. Maybe. A neck tattoo that says oh, okay. Beatrice. <laughs> Beatrice. <laughs> Beatrice. My ex. Yeah. My ex on the other side or just Beatrix, my ex? Oh, I kind of like that. My ex, Beatrice. So, like, no one really knows. There's a lot of confusion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I like yeah, that. Yeah. Keep people guessing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's get Winona forever. Is that from an 80s film? No, I'm kidding. No. <laughs> Slammed you. 
slammed you, Dean. You did. This is a new generation. It is. Baby. It's sort of. It's from uh, Edward Scissorhands. Mm-hmm. It's what at, after that. Oh, yeah, that's you got right. Winona forever. Did you know there was an actor who read it? He didn't get it, and he uh, tossed it aside. And then whenever he saw the first, like, I don't know, minute of it, he's like, "Oh, I get it now." I understand. Yeah. He was a big time. He was a big actor too at the time. I forget what his name is. Hmm. Oh gosh. I like hearing those stories of of actors who declined roles. Yeah. Who was he reading for? Edward I, Scissorhands. Oh, he was reading. Yeah, you for. could easily find it. Um, and he talks about how like he was like, I didn't get it. Right. It was like suburba and the suburban <laughs> homes, and all of a sudden this castle, yeah. and he's like, what? Right. Um, and then uh, I like the Lord of the Rings thing where they offered Sean Connery like a percentage of the back end, oh. and he was like, no. <laughs> Have you heard Jake Gyllenhaal's audition story for Lord of the Rings? No. Oh my gosh, it's so good. What he didn't that? understand. So uh, they they put like a chest at the end of the room, and his instruction was like to go open the chest and act like you just discovered like the One Ring. Uh, and he just walked over, casually opened it, and picked it up. <laughs> and he said Peter Jackson was sitting there and just went. <laughs> and Peter Jackson said to Jake Gyllenhaal, he's talked about this. He said, you are the worst actor I have ever seen. And that was it. That was the audition. What? For, Real yeah. talk. He talks about his bad <laughs> auditions all the time. He auditioned for Dude, Where's My Car? Oh. And he wanted to bring, like, he auditioned for Ashton uh, Kutcher's yeah. part. And he wanted to bring, like, this weird, like, voice into it. He did, like, this kind of, like, dude, where's my car? Like, bring this, like, lisp into it. Right. And the r- readers, the producers were like... Can we do it this time with without the voice? And he was like, yeah, I guess. He was like, this is it. This is the character. This is dude, where's my car? I'll wow. send it to you. It's such Please. a good story. What, well, did he not get any breakdown for Lord of the Rings then? Like, what, what, they just said, hey, walk over there, grab a ring from a chest? And there was something, like, they forgot to tell him at one point. There, but it wasn't about the chest thing. The chest thing was just confusion. Right. It sounds like just walk over and he opened it. And he, he said he, like, went, like. Yeah. And <laughs> I can do that. Open the chest, get a ring. I think he didn't know for Lord of the Rings he was supposed to do an accent oh. uh, as well. And so when they actually started reading lines, they're like, can you do the accent? He was like, I didn't know I was supposed to do an accent. And that's what led to you are the worst actor <laughs> I have ever seen. That's funny. Um, Gary Oldman, by the way. Gary oh. Oldman. No shot. Well, he's doing fine. Yeah. You just say no shot? No shot. Okay. I don't know. It's one of those things where, like, I feel like Johnny Depp is so good and iconic in that role. It's hard to imagine another performer doing it. I'm so sorry. This is... Uh, We're talking you, about Edward Scissorhands, you, right? You, are you trying to say no shit and you said no shot? No, you've never heard no shot before? No. It's oh, okay. A, I haven't either. Oh, it's I thought you were saying thing. no... I, then I thought you were saying no shot like he would have never gotten it. No. Okay. No shot. Sorry. You're too old. <laughs> yeah. These kids today. <laughs> <I'm>, oh, no! <laughs> 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 Zoom. Have you ever like? Do you have any bad audition stories? Please, <laughs> please. Well, I have one that sort of made led to me leaving Stagecoach. That time that I left Stagecoach because I was so humiliated. I humiliated myself so much in this audition that. Do you ever have memories where you you like, <laughs> they you go. Uh, <laughs> And feel them. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. My eyes are tearing up. Bill, Bill Burr talks about it. He's like, you're in the shower and you think of it and you, then you lean against the shower and you're like, why did I do that? Why did I do that? <laughs> so this is one of those. So I, it was a, it was a audition for a, a regular and a pilot, which I never get. So I was very like, oh, cool. So I learned this part and I was like, cool. This is really good. And I get there and I go in and, and they have stuff set up for me. And I start, I go, oh, that's weird. And so I move, I go, do you need that? And I go, no, I move around. And um, the, and it's with people, like the director and producer are there and the casting director who's big casting director. And she starts reading and she reads my first line. And I realize I've learned the wrong Heart. and instead of going I'm sorry I've learned the wrong role can I come back I go oh, and cold read this 
Why did I do that? And it, it was, uh, and and I finished, and it was like Peter Jackson. There is like you're not even an actor. You, it, it it just it was so bad. Everyone was uncomfortable. There were two other scenes, and I was like, "All right, I'm gonna go." And left, and I sat in the waiting room, and I, I this friend of mine, Reed Diamond, I don't know if you know it, he was there reading, and I go, I just, I, go, I just, and I was like near tears. I was like, I just fucking blew, I just blew this audition, I, and that that there, yeah, it was awful, like horrible, and yeah, <laughs> just the wrong. And I was, because I was very confident. I was like, do you need that? I was like, nope. I'm gonna, nope. I don't need that. I don't need that. So, what? Horrible. So that that's my horrible. And I was so humiliated that I thought I'm never gonna get a job, <laughs> and there I'm wasting my time, and I'm just gonna do under like one day guest stars from now on. That's my life. So. I have another good one. I have a bunch of good on horrible. <laughs> I, n- I never told Steve about this. Because I just imagined Dean. <laughs> Cocky going in there. Like, I can, I, yeah. I've carried TV shows before. <laughs> I've done this. I can be a regular on a, on a series. It's what I've, I did that a lot. Bro. I've carried movies. I can, so yeah, I know what the fuck I'm doing, people. Nah. <laughs> I would pay a thousand dollars for that tape. Uh, yeah, uh, there was no tape. Thank God, there is no tape. Oh my God! <laughs> or maybe there is a tape, but I'm, they deleted it. They burned it. They Gross. had to have burned it. I, you know, you know what, you know what I'm laughing about. It's, it's that uncomfortableness. Yeah. Because it's, it's real. Yeah. That's like when life is at its most real. Yeah. You know, and yes. you're like, oh. And everybody yeah. feels yes. that. Yeah, we all connect in this yeah, horrible, like, horrible like, way. Holy shit. They feel horrible for me. They, they I feel horrible for them. <laughs> We're all just, this Dude, is. I can't wait to tell my friend about this. Okay, cool. Yeah, 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 it'll be great. <laughs> no, I, 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 it's, that sucks, but it's like, we've all had that I've, feeling. I've only told one other person about this. I only <gasps> told Jesse, and I just told my wife, I just told her l- last year, and this happened maybe five years ago. I've never shared it with anyone. <laughs> Thank you for sharing it. Sure. Thank you. you want to hear another good, Please. bad audition story? We, we have, have time. Okay. We have time. Okay. We're, we're good. Good. Yeah. So there was a movie years ago called uh, 18 Again. There was this, all these body switching movies. Oh, yeah. In the so that 80s. was the Zac Efron? Oh, the Zac Efron one. one. 17 Again? 18 Again. This, no, this is in the oh. eight, This is 80s. Oh. oh. It was Charlie Schleider and George Burns ended up doing it. And so I was, I was known... At this time, it's sort of the funny friend and thing, and I wanted to do sort of, you know, not just be that. And so it was, they were having a heart. Cause, you know, you, one of the things you do when you start as an actor, you try to find what your niche is. Like, oh, I'm the funny friend. And you go for that, and you try to make a name for yourself as that. Or I'm, I'm the fat friend, or I'm the, I'm the leading man. I'm the, the, the. So, there, so my agents and, and my pimps were having a hard time getting me in on, like, and lead stuff and so they got me lead the audition for this lead in a fe- feature right and and like they don't want to see you thanks for telling me that they don't want to see you but we managed to get you an audition but they think you're weird they think you're weird and um so don't act weird when you go in like oh okay thanks and so just pl- be straight be play it straight I'm like, okay i yeah, I get it. I've I've seen the, what's in the script. I don't have to, like, but yeah, but they really they really do not want to see you. Like, okay, thank you for telling me that. Wow. So I go in and I'm wearing this red. <laughs> I'm wearing this sweatshirt. And so two things happen. I'm I'm reading and I'm I'm in there and they're they're just like yeah we don't want to see you. But I, I read and I do this with my nose and something falls out. Something hard falls out of my nose on to the sides and it to me it go it sounds like this <laughs> sliding down the page and I'm like oh my god I, horrible and then so then I sort of like dump that 
and then it's disgusting and I'm sorry and then I, I go ow fuck and I go ah I just got stung by something God, something just stung me ah and they're behind the counter going yeah he's a fucking weirdo <laughs> he's this fucking weirdo <laughs> and I'm like oh, oh sorry but they think like that's some choice I made in this scene <laughs> And I, I think I'm like, oh, yeah, not getting this uh, in my head. I'm like, yep, oh, yeah, you fucking weirdo. And 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 so I, I go, thanks. They go, mm, yeah, great, thanks for coming in. And I leave, and I take off my sweatshirt, and a bee falls out of my fucking. I got stung by a motherfucking bee during my audition, and I wanted to go back in there and go, I. Get, I got stung. I go. That would just be the weirdest thing. I'd be. That'd just make it even worse. <laughs> I wish you did. I, I wish I did too. But uh, yeah, that's that's. Uh. And here's my last one. Dude. One, one more. One more horrible. One more horrible. Oh Read for a movie called Born on the Fourth of July. <laughs> Hold on. You gotta give me a second. Like this is. I gotta like process some of this. Oh man. Um, can I ask what like. Would you tell your reps afterwards? Didn't say anything. Yeah. yeah. No. Nope. Like again, I secret shame. <laughs> I think I told I told my girlfriend at the time. She's like, eh. that's why we're not together. I know that feeling of being being stung by a bee. I've been stung by a bee twice recently, somewhat recently in the last few years. But one while I was driving. Oh. I was in the car with you. Oh really? That's right from the golf. In, yeah. <laughs> wow. Do you remember how I reacted? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just the same. You just start twitching over in the driver's seat. And it's just like, oh, that's how we go. We got <laughs> <laughs> no shot. We're just driving. He's just like, something stung me. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I sound like such a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> that's just the most genuine. You're just like, hey, something just like hurt me <laughs> just now. I remember pulling over. Yeah. And going, okay. Yeah. Something stung me. And then the beat, there's the bee. And yeah. it's like, what? Like what? what? Yeah. And then one time I uh, was just about to go get my workout at the park and I'm driving and I'm like, ooh, man, my shoulder, there's a sharp pain in there. Because I'd been working out a lot and I'm like, oh man, what did a I muscle do? twinge yeah. or something. I park and I'm like, oh, that's really bad. And then like I like reach and I see, feel this little thing. Furry. No, no, it's the stinger, but I didn't know oh, what it was. Oh, I was oh. going, and I'm like, yeah. I had a splinter. <laughs> An active splinter. Yeah, and I was like, attack. <laughs> did I get a splinter? And then, <clears throat> boom, it's just the dead, you know, like yeah. it's on its last right. bit. And it was like crawling on my arm or my leg. And I was like, again? Okay. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Note to self, never get in a car with Weesum. No. Sorry, Please. let's uh, everywhere. Please. Let's finish this up. Can I tell uh, you my one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was going to, yeah, your last one, yeah. So uh, there's this movie called born on the 4th of July that Oliver Stone directed and Tom Cruise star in it, and I got an audition for The Friend uh, and there was this long monologue it was a one page monologue about I, I forget what it was about it, it's in the movie Jerry Levine got the gig so I go in and <clears throat> read with Oliver Stone and he goes I just just do the first paragraph I go well I, I learned I learned the whole thing he goes yeah I just need to see the first paragraph and this is a horrible mistake. Never do this. But I was cocky. I'm like, I go, well, I learned, I learned the whole, whole thing. So I'm going to do the whole thing. He goes, no, just, just do the first fucking paragraph. I'm like, no, I'm going to do the whole, I'm going to do the whole monologue. <laughs> and he goes, do the first <laughs> paragraph. Go, I, I'm, I'm, I learned the whole monologue. He goes, get the fuck out of my office. And go, okay, fuck you, asshole. And I left. Dean! <laughs> Oliver Stone? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Oliver Stone! Yeah. Notorious prick. Notorious <laughs> prick. I love your I had another Oliver. friend who, who read for the same part, and he was walking around and with an, uh, a water bottle just like getting in his face and like, like going like that. Yeah. Notorious cock. <laughs> But yeah, so that was my... That Dean, was, thanks for coming on the show. <laughs> so never do that. If they say, just read the first paragraph, you go, great, cool. But I'd worked on it for like three days and it was a b b b twist some turns. And, but yeah, you just wanted to see if... Oh, Dean. Just wanted to see him, I think. When was this? Whenever that was, 80-something. Yeah. 
You're the best. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. Man. Of course. Thanks for having me. This is so good. Yeah. Um, Ow! Damn it! <laughs> ah! Thanks for listening. <laughs> 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 Okay. <laughs> There's another B in here, Dean. <laughs> um, great. Uh, if people want to check out your album, comes up, uh, comes out August second, right? It came out. August. It comes out August second. Good job, we Sam. We're in August. time travel. Can't talk today. Yeah, August second. It came out. Low speed chase. It's everywhere. Uh, title. Uh, I'm thinking iTunes. we're still in July. Wow. August second. It's already happened. <laughs> Low speed chase. As far as you know, it's already happened. On Spotify, Spotify YouTube? Spotify, YouTube, iTunes, Tidal. Great. Deezer. Things I've never heard of. Okay. It's out there. Awesome. Awesome. And you're at Dean Cameron? At Dean Cameron on the uh, Instagrams. All right. I'll see you on the picket lines. <laughs> I can't be around a lot. I, people keep asking me, I can't be around that many actors, especially if they're being self-righteous. <laughs> But I'm growing this beard. I'm growing this beard in solidarity. Yes. I, seriously. I will say this. Yeah. I have been on the picket lines, yeah. and I know exactly what you're talking about because I've been overhearing conversations that make me want to take a few steps right into traffic. Yeah. So, with that being said, <laughs> Peyton, my man. My man. Play us out. No shot. No shot. No, no shot, shot, Peyton. No shot, Peyton. No shot. Peyton. Oh, that's good. That's good. that's good. Uh, what's it called? Gear. Oh my God. Good gear. Merch. 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 Fuck. Good me. gear. Hey everybody, how's it going? Thanks for <laughs> watching the show. Thanks for putting up with today's episode. Just kidding. We had a great time with Dean. Make sure you check out his band, Low Speed Chase, Spotify, YouTube. Follow him at Dean Cameron. Thanks for watching or listening. Make sure you subscribe to us. Hit the bell icon for notifications, as well as comment below if you're watching on YouTube. <clears throat> that being said, always remember to listen, think, and then talk. Bye. Drive fast, take chances.